Hi, welcome to Adobe Video On Demand covering configuring enterprise and federated IDs. In this session, we'll be covering the following, activating enterprise IDs, activating federated IDs with SSO overview, configuring SSO, switching from Adobe to enterprise federated IDs, as well as impacts. You can force users to access Adobe products and services using identities based off of the organization or school by leveraging enterprise or federated IDs. Users may also have a personal or former account that uses an Adobe ID. If both of their accounts uses the same email address, the user can specify the account type to use while signing in. These two accounts share the email address, but are distinct accounts. No data is shared or transferred automatically. For more information about the various ID options, please review the prior identities overview sessions. If you have chosen to create enterprise ID directory, just simply add your domains and then begin entitling your users to the product using enterprise ID. Please note the domain that you've associated with enterprise ID will be the email that your users will need to sign in to access their entitled software. If you've chosen to create federated ID directories, Adobe will need to provision this directory before you can proceed with any more operations on it. However, you do not need to wait around while Adobe provisions this directory. You can go ahead and set up your domains in the admin console. Provisioning federated ID type directories typically take up to 48 hours. You are notified by email when it's done. This will allow you to configure your single sign-on, also known as SSO settings, within the console prior to activating federated IDs. After you receive the email from Adobe confirming that your directory is provisioned, configure your SAML settings for this directory. When organizations configure and enable single sign-on, users in that organization are able to use their corporate credentials to access Adobe software. This enables users to use a single credential to access Adobe desktop apps, services, and mobile apps. The Adobe Admin Console offers a method for enterprise users to authenticate using their existing corporate identity. Adobe Ferret ID enables integration with a single sign-on identity management system. Single sign-on is enabled using SAML, an industry standard protocol that connects enterprise identity management systems to cloud services providers like Adobe. SSO can securely exchange authentication information between two parties, the service provider Adobe and your identity provider, IDP, the service provider sends a request to your IDP, which attempts to authenticate the user. If the authentication is successful, the IDP sends a response message to sign in the user. To successfully set up SSO for Adobe software, IT admins need the following, an understanding of SAML 2.0, an identity provider that supports SAML 2.0, and at the minimum must have an IDP certificate, IDP login URL, IDP binding, assertion consumer service URL, as well as access to your DNS configuration for the domain claim process. The login URL of the IDP does not need to be externally accessible for users to be able to access it for logging in. However, it is only reachable within the organization's internal network. Users can only log in to their Adobe products when they are connected to the organization's internal network either directly via Wi-Fi or via VPN. It is not necessary for the login page to be accessible only via HTTPS, but it is recommended for security reasons. Please note Adobe does not currently support IDP-initiated SSO. SP-initiated is only supported at this stage. Adobe's cloud services offers SSO using a SAS SAML 2.0 connector provided by Okta. The connector is used to communicate with your identity provider to provide authentication services. You are not required to use Okta as your identity provider service since Okta connects to many SAML 2.0 identity service providers. If your organization wants to test SSO integration, it is recommended that you claim a test domain that you own as long as your organization has an identity provider with identities set up in that test domain. This allows you to test the integration before you claim the main domains until you feel comfortable with the domain claim and configuration process. When ready to configure SSO, simply follow these steps. Sign into the admin console and navigate to Settings Identity. Go to the Directories tab. 
click configure for the directory that you want to configure. In the configured directory screen that displays, enter your IDP certificate, IDP binding, user login settings, IDP issuer, as well as IDP login URL. If you do not have the certificate, contact your identity provider for instructions to download the certificate file. Click Save, then click Download Metadata. The metadata file is downloaded to your local disk. Use this file to configure your SAML integration with your identity provider. The identity provider requires this file to enable single sign-on. Work with your IDP directory manager to complete the SSO configuration with your identity provider. After the SSO configuration with your identity provider is complete, sign into the admin console and navigate to Settings Identity. Click Configure for the relevant directory. In the Configure Directory screen, check I have completed the configuration with Identity Provider and click Complete. Your directory is now configured for single sign-on. If you have not done so already, you can add domains to the admin console. If you already added domains to the admin console, you can link the required domains to this directory. As a console system administrator, you can change the identity type for the user in your organization from Adobe ID type users to enterprise or federated ID type users. Alternatively, you can switch enterprise or federated ID type users to Adobe IDs. If you switch the identity type for users from Adobe IDs to enterprise or federated IDs, these users will continue to have access to their personally owned Adobe IDs. However, they will access the organization's Adobe apps, services, and solutions through the new enterprise or federated IDs assigned to them. There are a couple ways to switch existing Adobe ID users to enterprise or federated IDs within the console. The first method is to manually remove Adobe ID users in the console and re-add them under the new identity type. The second option is leverage the switch user identity import to change users' identities in bulk. You can find this under Users Edit Identity Type by CSV. When users sign in as an enterprise user, they're signing in as a new user created by the organization's administrator. You can think of this as a separate account, distinct from the one that you're currently using. Data is associated with the user, and since an enterprise user is effectively a do user, such as design libraries, files, fonts, apps, settings, and more, are not automatically transferred to the enterprise or federated ID account. Data remains available with the Adobe ID account. If you need access to this data upon initial login via Enterprise or Federated ID, the user will have the option to have Adobe automatically transfer their assets over or opt to manually move or decline the transfer altogether. We hope this helps you in being familiar with the features and tools within this section. Thank you for watching this session on configuring Enterprise and Federated IDs.